Hi, boys and girls. Welcome to today's reading lesson. Today we are going to learn more about poetic devices used in poetry. Last week, we learned about similes. A simile is a figure of speech where things are compared using the words like or as. A metaphor is a figure of speech stating two things that are similar. When using a metaphor, we do not use the words like or as. This week, we're going to learn about personification. Personification is giving human qualities to non-human items. Kind of like this. The moon smiled down upon us. We know that a moon cannot actually smile because it's a moon. It's not a person. But if we look up at a full moon, it might feel like it's looking down on us or smiling down upon us. Here's another example. The flowers begged for water. We know that flowers cannot beg. People, kids can do that. But maybe the flower was wilted and it needed water. So we can say that the flower begged for water. Or try this one. The camera loved her. We know that cameras cannot actually love because they're not people. But if we give it a human quality, maybe this person just really likes taking selfies. So he could say that the camera loved her. So personification is using human qualities to describe non-human things. Think about it as a point of view. Point of view is when we are thinking about who is telling a story or who is narrating it. Personification, person, point of view. This is a poem from our textbook. It's titled, I've Got This Covered. Use what we learned about personification and point of view to figure out what non-human item is being given human qualities. I've Got This Covered by Laura Purdy Salas. I'm the first thing you see when you walk by a book. My picture is shouting, please stop, take a look. I've got dazzling colors, all you could want. I wish I had glitter and sparkles to flaunt. I only have seconds to show that you need to pick up this book, get comfy and read. What do you think this book, this poem was personifying what personification was being used the personification being used in this poem was the cover of books think about it we walk by covers of books all the time before we even open the book to know what's in it so in this poem the author gave the cover of the book a voice, a point of view, made it as if it was a person talking to the reader. The title of this poem is My Dinner Loves Dancing. My food loves to prance, to jump, to dance. I wait for the time, I wait for the chance. As mommy goes in and out of the room, tables and chairs become their ballroom. I flick my fingers, swing my wrist. Beans and turkey are doing the twist. Peas, plums, apples, or mangoes onto the walls. They're doing the tango. With grace, with taste, they drip from the ceiling. Squash on my head is such a great feeling. Talented textures cover my feet. Sensations and rhythms squished in my seat. They run down my legs, slide down in rows, a flavored performance of mashed potatoes. My kitties are tickling, lickling my feet, purring an encore, a wonderful treat. Even my puppies stand in display, showing their talents, food for ballet. With me as the maestro directing the show, waving my hands, perfection I throw. Symphonic expressions fly through the air, musical remnants of fruit in my hair. Just as great things must come to an end, with wipes in her hand, my mommy steps in. 
She starts with the wiping, my ears and my toes. She searches for dancers stuck in my nose. I know that she cares. Doesn't she know? She's ruining perfection. She's ruining my show. Away with this, my spoons and off with my bib. Off to my bath and into my crib. Where now I can dream and think of my chance. A time soon to come when my dinner will dance. Written by L. John Riley. What were some of the things that were being personified in this poem? Know about you, but I immediately thought of Beauty and the Beast, especially this scene where the objects are singing Be Our Guest and the food is coming to the table and all of these inanimate objects are being given human qualities. This is an example of personification because candles don't really talk. Plates and forks don't really sing, but they're being given human qualities to make our imagination even stronger. The poem was actually about a baby who from her point of view was seeing the dinner time as a ballroom, as a dance, as something really exciting with an orchestra and a symphony, but really it was just the baby making a mess with the food. That's personification, seeing something at a different point of view. So remember, personification is giving human qualities to non-human items.